Good morning, everybody. Today we are going to be wrapping up Unit 7 uh, by talking about juvenile justice. Uh, so first we're going to go over this warm-up just really briefly. It says, which amendment article uh, for each your right to trial is your Sixth Amendment? Due process is your Fifth Amendment right? Search and seizure is your Fourth Amendment? Remember, search warrants, uh, writ of habeas corpus, and ex post facto laws. Uh, go back to Article 1 of the Constitution. What is the difference between felony and misdemeanor? Um, a felony is a serious crime and a misdemeanor is a not so serious crime. What are the two sides in a civil case? That would be plaintiff and defendant. In a criminal case, that would be prosecutor or state versus defendant. Um, number four, how are most civil cases solved? They're mostly solved out of court in an arbitration or a mediation setting. Um, that's called a settlement. What is the difference between grand and petite juries is number five. A grand jury determines whether or not there's evidence. You will not ever actually see them. And a petite jury is the 12 people in court that will try you. All right, guys, so moving on to juvenile justice. The first thing we need to figure out is who is a juvenile. A juvenile is defined as someone under the age of 18, but sometimes the age of 16. Uh, in North Carolina, the age was recently changed to 18. So in this presentation, it will say 16, but in actual, actuality, it is 18. Uh, a juvenile delinquent is a juvenile who breaks the law. So in North Carolina, I know it says 16, but it's 18 now. Uh, when can a juvenile be treated as an adult in North Carolina? Now, this did not change. You can still be treated as an adult at 14, 15 years old um, if you commit a serious felony. Um, and the reason behind that is if you commit a serious crime uh, at 14 or 15 years old, the, the rationale is that you knew what you were doing. Um, you were of cognizant mind to commit that crime. It's different if you're five or six years old and you don't know what you're doing. But when you're 14, 15, you have control over your actions. Even if you might not have control over your emotions, you have control over your actions and you will be charged with a felony and treated as an adult. So causes of juvenile crime, <clears throat> poor home conditions and poor neighborhood conditions is a big cause of juvenile crime. Um, if your parents or the people that live around you are constantly committing crimes or doing things that are that break the law, you are more prone to do those things as well. Drugs and alcohol, uh, especially in your household, <clears throat> also more likely to contribute to juvenile delinquency. Um, if your parents aren't really paying attention to what's going on with you um, because they're on drugs and alcohol, or if they offer you the use of drugs and alcohol, you are more likely to become a juvenile delinquent. Um, gang memberships, because gangs are inherently criminal, um, gang memberships increase the likelihood of juvenile crime. Peer pressure, uh, I know everybody has been peer pressured at some point. Sometimes it's to do something little and silly. Sometimes it's to break the law. Uh, make sure that the next time your friends peer pressure you and they want you to break the law, you tell them no because uh, it can really ruin your life doing little small crimes uh, and can keep you in, a, in the system of, in the judicial system for a very long time. And dropping out of school. Uh, we haven't talked about it yet, but we will talk about it next unit uh, when we start talking about finances. Uh, dropping out of school, guys, is probably the worst thing that you can do. I know nobody likes coming to school, but uh, understand that uh, when you drop out of school, if you never finish high school or get your GED, you have a 50-50 chance at going to jail at least once in your life. Um, so understand that you know just graduating from high school drastically decreases your chance of uh, being arrested, and also uh, going to college it, it like it drops from like 50-50 to like 75% if you just go to college. Uh, as far as being arrested, like you 75% chance you will not be arrested. <clears throat> and if you graduate from college, it drops to almost a 98% chance that you will never be arrested in your life. So just statistically dropping out of school is a bad choice. 
Uh, yeah, so here you go. This is what I was just talking about, your arrest rate versus your, your graduation rate. So if you drop out of high school, you have a 41% chance of being arrested. Uh, if you only have a high school diploma, you have a 23% chance of being arrested or a GED, a 23% chance. So guys, what I want y'all to understand is like if you just go to college, there's 13%. So it's, you know, you have a 87% chance of not being arrested. Um, and if you graduate from high school or sorry, graduate from college, it drops even more significantly. All right, here are your consequences for juveniles. The goal for juvenile punishment is rehabilitation. So in the judicial system, uh, they do not want juveniles to be punished, but rather rehabilitated to go on and, and have a second chance to be uh, a productive member of society. Some consequences, you might be taken away from your parents and put in foster care. Uh, you might be put in a juvenile correction facility, uh, which is like jail, but limited to juveniles. There's no adults. You might be put on probation and you might be required to go seek counseling. Um, again, none of these are super punitive, but the goal is to rehabilitate. Um, what do you think? Should juveniles be treated differently than adults? Why or why not? Uh, I will put up a discussion board for this today where you can you can add in your idea and tell me what you think um, and even respond to other people. Uh, you know, I'll do my best to respond to all of you and um, you can you can you know tell me what you think about what I have to say. All right, guys, that is uh, I know it's a very short video, but that is this whole unit um, and that is all I have for you today. I hope you all have a great day and I look forward to seeing you soon.